The press is really turning on John Kelly. Now, obviously, much of this has to do with the current mess at the White House over Rob Porter, the way that was mishandled. Everybody admits it was handled. Corey Lewandowski came on Media Buzz, said mistakes were made. Kellyanne Conway, Mick Mulvaney, they all went on the Sunday shows. Uh, Kellyanne Conway in particular is saying she was horrified by the abuse allegations by two of Rob Porter's ex-wives. Uh, but at the same time, there were the shifting statements by the White House Chief of Staff and a feeling that um, he should have acted earlier, that he should have uh, more aggressively pursued those allegations. So that's your classic Washington mess. And, you know, the criticism is certainly fair game. But there's something deeper going on here. When John Kelly took over from Reince Priebus as chief of staff, uh, the press basically swooned over him. So, oh, this guy is a no-nonsense four-star general. He's going to come in. He's going to bark orders. He's going to kick butt. He's going to take names. And he's going to bring some order to the then viewed as a largely dysfunctional White House. And General Kelly did um, crack down on who could see the president, the paper flow to the president. He kind of shut out some of the outside advisors or greatly restricted their access, I should say. And that bred some resentment. But now you have a sort of this confluence where the Porter soap opera, the saga, the very serious saga, um, has given an opening uh, to journalists who now are somewhat shocked to discover that on many issues, the former Homeland Security uh, Secretary, the career military officer, agrees with Donald Trump in taking a hard line. So, for example, on the Dreamers negotiations, uh, where the president has offered to double the number of um, recipients or benefit, uh, potential beneficiaries, um, Kelly, in his non-diplomatic way, said, well, some of them, you know, would get these benefits. They were too afraid or too lazy to get off their asses and apply for the benefit. And that, of course, brought him a lot of criticism. Uh, there's been other things. He had that dust up with the congresswoman uh, when he didn't quite get the facts straight. This had to do with that whole huge media furor over whether President Trump was properly paying his respects with families of the fallen, uh, those who were dying in American wars. So now you have, um, you know, this sort of whisper campaign. Well, has, has Trump lost confidence in Kelly? Is he going to be gone? As one source uh, who's well-connected to these matters told me, uh, when you start to read in the press the names of potential successors being floated, like Mick Mulvaney and others, it doesn't happen by accident. Now, it doesn't mean the president's going to replace him. I don't see that happening. I think he probably was, is or was unhappy uh, with the general's performance. But when Kellyanne Conway goes uh, on with CNN's Jake Tapper and says, the president told me to tell you, Jake, that he has full confidence in chief of staff, usually doesn't mean that the person is going to get cashiered the next day. Yes, I know she went out and talked about full confidence in Mike Flynn, and then he got canned. But there was obviously some conflicting signals there. So look, the White House chief of staff is fair game for criticism. But there is, I think, um, something in our media and political culture that when someone is built up, and, and Kelly was viewed as a savior. He was the guy who was going to talk sense into Trump. He never viewed that as his job. He's never told the president not to tweet. But he did try to bring some order to a White House where a lot of people did a lot of freelancing, cracked down on the leaks, cracked down on anybody walking into the Oval Office and handing uh, the president some piece of paper. Um, inevitably, there were going to be a wave of reassessment stories. Well, is he really doing the job? Well, he hasn't really changed Trump. Well, the White House still has its problems. Now, some of this is self-inflicted. There's no question that with those, with those two statements, first praising Rob Porter uh, as a hardworking guy, man of great integrity, and not mentioning domestic abuse allegations, and the second statement, in which Kelly said he was shocked and that the domestic abuse has no place in our society, uh, it was not the smoothest handling of it. So I'm not defending him on that, but I do think there's something telling here. If this is a permanent shift, then the White House Chief of Staff in the future is going to be as much a target uh, as the president. And that could, you know, I don't think he cares all that much what the press says about him. This is a guy who's been at war, who lost a son uh, in combat. Um, but it could change the tone of the reporting uh, unless this blows over and the president makes clear that he does, in fact, have continued confidence in his chief of staff.